Yes, we have all the latest transfers to give you. As um, Jordan Henderson has said his goodbyes to um, Liverpool, he is on his way to uh, Etihad and for Al uh, Etifak and for Fabinho as well. He's on his way to Al uh, Etihad. He will not travel with the team to um, Singapore for the next stage of their preseason game. Actually, and Liverpool are still chasing Romeo Lavia. We have the latest on all of that. Latest on, on Harry Kane and all the friendlies that were played early this morning slash last night. Before we get started properly though, I know it's the Premier League zone, we have to do this. Uh, our women are in action at the FIFA Women's World Cup, uh, Falcon, uh, Super Falcons, and the starting lineups for both teams are out. The match kicks off at 11 o'clock Nigerian time. I just want to quickly breeze through the players that Randy Waldrum has chosen for this game. Um, there is no desire prime here. Of course, he just came back from injury. And of course, uh, Asita Nishwala has been doubtful, and she has actually missed this one as well. So, in goal for the Falcons, um, Chiamaka Naduzi, Ashley Pomter, um, Dumei, uh, what's that, Chihali, uh, Michel Alozi, uh, start in defense. In the midfield, there's Chris Uchebe, um, Halimat Ayinde returns after missing the first game. Rahidat Ajibadi also returns after missing the first game. Tony Payne, uh, Ifama Onomonu, and Uche Nakanu are the ladies in uh, attack for the team. Uh, let's go to Australia very quickly. Mackenzie Arnold starts in goal. Uh, across the back line, Ella Carpenter, um, Claire Hunt, Alana Kennedy, Steph Catley. Um, in the midfield, we have uh, Oli Van Egmond, um, Katrina Ligori, Kira Kuni Cross, and the three goal for Courtney Vine, Caitlin Ford, and of course, Hayley Russell. Um, like I said, that match kicks off at 11 o'clock Nigerian time. Yeah, we're not talking about the World Cup here. It's in the Premier League zone. And then um, the guys are in the studio with me. Bonnie Bruno, Triple O, and of course, um, Tommy Sin also here in the studio. Guys, how are you doing this morning? Bonnie, how are you doing this morning? Feeling right? Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, glad to be here once again. Um, in a matter of days, mm. uh, in a matter of days, uh, less than uh, a month, mm. you know, the new season will be kicking up. So, Looking forward to that as well. Mm, definitely. Triple O, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I think about uh, about 14, 14 days, days, 14, 15 days time, uh, the Premier League should be starting. And I cannot wait to see Nicola Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's just get into it. Let's remind you that you can call us at any point on this show 0700 923 You can also call or send WhatsApp messages to 081 is where to call or send WhatsApp messages to. We're also live on Facebook at Inspiration FM 92.3. Just leave your comments on other live feed and uh, read them on the show so let's just get started very very quickly let's start with liverpool yes it's not news anymore jordan henderson is um leaving liverpool he's actually uh, done a video a uh, very emotional video must be said announcing his departure from liverpool um saying he'll miss the club and all the usual stuff he's been saying um buddy um how will he be remembered at liverpool most importantly um is um leadership skills mm. i think um anderson is one player a lot of uh, liverpool fans will end up missing mm. uh, uh, see it does happen that why uh, that a, a prophet is not always respected in his home uh, respected in his home and anderson is that kind of player the fact that he has the ability to calm things down mm. even when liverpool are under so much pressure yep even when players begin to lose their head, it's always there to tell everyone, guys, relax. You know, some some other captains. Uh, see, I'm I'm thinking if it was a Roy King, rather rather calm down everyone. You know, it tends to foil up situations. For Henderson, he's been th uh, thoroughly professional, led by example, and that is one thing he'll be leaving behind at Liverpool. Mm. Hopefully, those that played under him will understand the fact that. Is passing a button, a, a button over to each Liverpool player, making mm. them understand the fact that while I was here, I served you all. So mm. for Anderson, see, even in the Premier League, we missed as well. Yep. All the best to him, right. in Saudi. Uh, let me still stick with you now because we're going to United next. You're the United fan in the studio. Uh, Rasmus Highland, we hear United have made a verbal offer of um. 42.8 million pounds 50 million euros plus 10 million euros in add-ons um to atalanta for rasmus hoylon now it's way below way below what uh atalanta, atalanta was something close to 80 million euros so there's a 30 million euro uh, difference between the valuation of atalanta and what manchester united yeah, 20, 20 million now 
okay yes yeah, 20 million yeah there's a there's a there's a there's the split in valuation between both parties 20 million euros actually that's the that's the split um but again it looks like you know at some point everybody will everybody wants this deal to get done yeah. and it looks like deal will get done eventually and seriously for a play a 20 year old that hasn't really been tested you know he hasn't done it big in europe or placing or splashing 80 million pounds or euros on him is an overkill like, like like i would always say and on the show yesterday we did discuss about um highland as well i do feel eventually united would fork out as much as 65 million euros for him that 80 million good job yeah. that's perfect no seriously mm. all right uh let me go to uh Tripoli very quickly what's 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 going on with the with the pursuit of Mohamed Kudus. Um, Arsenal, we hear maybe they're in it, um, not confirmed, but Chelsea are the ones in it. And Chelsea do need some sort of creativity in the final third of the pitch. Yes, they've been playing friendlies. Maybe they haven't been winning all that much, but you know, just one win in three matches. Uh, but um, they need that creativity. You can't have Michael Jackson, Nicholas Jackson. You can't have Christopher Nkunku. You can't, <laughs> you can't have all these guys in attack and there's nobody supplying them the ammunition. Yes, uh, the, uh <laughs> 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 Sorry, Nicholas Jax is all over my head. I mean, something strange has been happening at Chelsea. I, I said it off here. Uh, you know, the passport, the passport gives striker strikers score goals. That's strange at Chelsea. Okay. <laughs> the strikers Chelsea, Chelsea have had you know, score goals. <laughs> but moving on to uh, uh, Mohamed Kudus, that's the Ghanaian attacking midfielder right there. Uh, but the the gist is that they've they've asked about uh Mohamed could do the conditions regarding his transfer the conditions they need to meet uh to to get the player but they've not they've not uh, made official b they've not spoken to the player as well we hear us now also uh they are informed about the situation yeah. of Mohamed Kudus, but they've not made contact we understand for us now they need to sell to buy at this point in time they've said until they sell players before they can buy and for chelsea uh the chelsea coach projectino uh after the game yesterday uh against Newcastle United, where they played a 1 1 draw, he, he's been talking about needing experience in the midfield. He needs a new midfielder and not just any kind of midfielder, a midfielder with experience because mm -hmm. he's now beginning to look at the squad and he's beginning to realize that this squad is a pretty much very, very young squad. Said some good things about some players, Matson in his plan, and he also com complained about the fact that despite the fact that Chelsea have sold about 12 or they've let about 10 players leave. About 11 players leave. He also still complained about the squad size, the squad number, asking about balance. Four left back at Chelsea, two right back. So he's asking for balance and all of that. So one thing is certain. Work will continue at Chelsea. They are not there yet. They are not ready for the season yet, even though it's just about 14 days to go because they still need to get, you know, deals done. And at this point in time, he doesn't want to sound as if he's complaining about the Caicedo deal. But what he's been saying, it all suggests that it all suggests that he needs the ball to get the Caicedo deal done. That DM is really, really needed mm -hmm. at Chelsea. Yeah, right, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's go back to Liverpool because we hear, we know, we said yesterday that a bid had been made for a uh, Romeo Lavia, thirty-seven uh, million pounds, thirty-five up front, and then uh, two in add-ons. We hear that that was soundly rejected, and we also hear that Liverpool will go back with a new bid. And from what I'm hearing this morning from you know some of my trusted sources, uh, Southampton seem like they're happy with the numbers it's not been made public it's not been made alone by the you know big sources and the official sources but southampton look like they're happy with the numbers liverpool have given to them the second time around and it looks like um, that deal could be announced before the end of tomorrow so buddy let me come to what sort of what sort of player will you be getting um if they eventually um get Romeo Lavia over the line um young um in the mode of a uh, kaiseda as well mm. but <laughs> it'll be coming <laughs> a lot more cheaper and mm. For a player that did work in the City Academy, you know that will be coming with a lot of uh, quality as well. And um, at the end of the day, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool will be getting themselves a gem. And hopefully as well, it can actually live up to all the hype mm. that it's getting at this point in time. Sometimes that transition from a top club to a mid club back to a top club might just be a major, major problem for some players. But Lavi have shown that it does have you know, the quality to shoulder a whatever burden uh the Liverpool team might want to put on him yes he's too young but again it plays like it, 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 his football um iq is like that of one that has been playing for years mm. and Liverpool will be getting themselves a very good player if club goes to a player then you know that he has done enough assignment on this player is checked him out everything that needs uh to fit into the box is done it and i'm um, looking forward to seeing him join Liverpool eventually mm. all right um let's just also tell you that the bombers are closing in 
on a goalkeeper. Um, the name of the goalkeeper is um, Radu. Um, so that's the player, that's the goalkeeper they're looking at. And we'll see if they get him eventually. That's um, Bournemouth. And all the other lower clubs, they're just, you know, strengthening and moving on with uh, their career. Let's just uh, quickly, let me come to Triple for this one. Let's talk about some of the friendlies that were played earlier before we start taking calls. Uh, United, uh, they were beaten by Real Madrid 2 0 early this morning. Arsenal looking good. Two goals from Trossard um, helped them to a 5 3 victory over Barcelona. Kahavet was on target too for um, Arsenal as well. Well, in that one, and of course, we saw Chelsea play a one-one draw with um, <laughs> Newcastle United. Aston Villa came a two-nil victory over Fulham as well. And Tottenham also picked up a trophy. Harry Kane has some silverware to his name. They beat um, Lion City Sailors five-one. Um, Harry Kane scored a penalty, captain the team as well. Richarlison scored a hat trick. Giovanni Lo Celso, who is subject of interest from Aston Villa, by the way, and Napoli, uh, he also got on target in that one. But generally, though, very quickly, we we'll have to start taking calls and messages. Um, uh, from all the friendlies we've seen. United, City themselves, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool. Um, which club has the has more reason to be excited and expectant of their new signings um, ahead of the new season? Well, uh, if, if you talk about new signings, uh, you have to put Chelsea in there. Mm. Nicholas Jackson and Kunku, they've been you know decent addition to that Chelsea squad. You look at Arsenal, Kai Havert has been a very good addition to their mm. squad so far. He scored two goals uh, uh, after his you know not so good uh, uh, start to live in that uh, game which he came off the bench. Their first game while they were still camping in Germany, and you look at Declan Rice, he's not that a very good start at Arsenal. Mm. In his interview, he talked about how how you know the the, the difference in tactics how Arsenal play and how West Ham United plays and yesterday without the clan rise Arsenal played much better than they did mm. against Manchester United they still need Thomas Partey in their squad for Manchester United yes they lost to Real Madrid by two goals to New but they seem to me like the team that is most ready amongst all of these top clubs in, in the Premier League they seem like the team is most ready right. I, I mentioned the fact that uh, Onana was out of his 18 yard 24 times 12 times in the first half 12 times in the second half in that game but guess what that looks like something you can batter them with but it, it, it was it was a strategy that actually worked for them yes they lost that game but you could see what they are trying to do with that tactics onana's debut was good it was fantastic uh -huh. made three saves he gave united more numbers in the game so statistically it was okay but you know they still lost did you enjoy this video hit the subscribe button for more leave a comment and like thank you